Greetings Space Kateers, Josh Fosgreen here, and Newsflash, Greetings Space Kateers is here to stay. Thank you all for your votes. Okay, uh, moving on, today I want to share a quick but hopefully very helpful tip for you to improve your base fills. So if you're a beginner and you can barely do any kind of base fill at this point, this video is probably not quite for you. I would check out the other beginner videos on my channel. For the rest of you, we will press on. Uh, there's no PDF today, we're just gonna jump straight into it. So what I hear bass players doing a lot is, uh, let's say we got a four bar phrase. We're just playing some bass line and then at the end of the four bars we do a fill. Pretty common thing that happens, okay? Um, what I hear a lot is that, that the amount of space taken up by the fill, let's say the fill starts here and then the bass line of the next bar starts here, okay? What I hear is that the fill peaks kind of in the middle and then just gets all flaccid and drops off at the end. Let me try to demonstrate with just a very basic rock drum beat. So I'll play some bass line. Now at the end of bar four. I'll try to do that again with a different fill. Okay, I'm kind of overdoing it. But here how I'm, I'm coming up with a, a phrase for my fills and then nothing's happening for a while before I go back into the bass line. Have you ever done that or heard a bass player do that? Uh, let me just say right now, this isn't always a bad thing, but it's something that we bass players tend to do uh, without thinking about it. And the reason I think people do it, and let's see if we can be honest with ourselves here, guys, and admit if we've ever done this, is you gotta get your head together to get back to the bass line. Maybe it's a more complicated bass line than just... So what you do is you go, okay, fill, or let's put the drums back on. I go, okay, I'm doing the fill. Oh shoot, where do I need to go now? So then I take the last quarter note or two to get back to the bass line. So what happens is it's like fill, 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 yeah, uh, bass line. Uh, and I think that it really can kill the fill. Unless you're doing that space thing at the end of the fill really on purpose, which I think a lot of bass players are not doing. Okay, you understand what I'm talking about here? Let me demonstrate just one more time. I'll try to talk through it. It's very hard to talk and play, as some of you will know. So I'm playing bass. A little action in bar two as part of the bass line. Now here's bar four, fill, space, and then back to the bass line. So my fills are always ending with a bunch of lag time before I get to beat one of the next bar, rather than what I wanna have you play with is something more like this. the end of the fill keeps running smoothly into the bass line. I'll do another one. Okay, so this isn't the only way to do a good fill, but I know that a lot of you, is it you? Are you one of the people? A lot of people are ending their fills early because they're trying to get back to the bass line. What I really want to get across to you in this video is just the concept of taking fills that you might play where you have a bunch of lag time at the end of the fill to get back to the bass line and practice running more smoothly into the bass line on beat one of the next bar. So I'm gonna demonstrate some different examples that I make up, but I don't really care about you learning exactly what I'm playing, I just want you to get the idea and then do this with your own playing vocabulary. Got it? Okay, so I'm gonna take this groove in G here, just working off a G blues scale basically. So there's three bars of bass line, here's the third bar, and then for bar four, we'll call that a problem fill because I've got a whole half note where I'm just chilling at the end. I'll do it again. So it's like, ooh, a bass fill's happening, but then it stops happening. So here's some more notes at the end. So now it's flowing in back into the bass line. And it doesn't even have to be that technical. It just helps keep the flow going so it's not such a big stop in the groove. <laughs> Didn't quite get to that one in time. And this is a great way to practice. Uh, <laughs> I was talking too much, I couldn't think of what I was doing. Um, it's a good way to practice just getting smoothly back into bass lines and moving your eyes around if you need to, just all the stuff that we avoid by ending our fills early. So uh, let me try to come up with another example. I'll use the same drum groove 
um, I'll try to do a little bit more interesting of a bass line. So let's try this out. And then here's where I'll do the fill, okay? Okay, so that's not terrible, but there's a whole quarter note at the end. Right? So maybe I'll try to fill that up more. A minor pentatonic. Um, so I'm taking a fill that sounds okay by itself and then I'm just playing around with the idea of having the fill keep the momentum going all the way into the bass line. So that rather than having this period, let's say the whole bar four is where the fill's happening, rather than having tension release flat line to the bass line, we go tension release right when the bass line happens is the idea here. Is that making sense? I hope it's making sense. If it isn't making sense, please leave a comment and I'll try to explain better. But what I really want you to do now is not worry about all the stuff that I just played specifically because the point is for you to take fills that you play habitually where you're thinking, yeah, that's kind of what Josh is talking about. I'm cutting the fill short there just to get back to the bass line. And just play with adding some more notes to the end of it so that it flows better. And I want to say again, it's not always wrong to have your fills end with a half note or something. Uh, it's just that when you're doing that unconsciously, a lot of times it's not really the musical result you're looking for. But I'm sure you could go through tons of songs and say, hey Josh, what about this bass fill? What about this bass fill? Are you saying this guy's doing it wrong? The answer is no. They're all probably great, all the examples that you could come up with. But um, what I found in my own playing years ago is that I would do that because I was just like barely making it through being able to do a fill and then getting back to the bass line and not losing what key I was in and stuff. So this is something I've worked on uh, a bit to be able to flow into the bass line better and maybe something where you need to take, if it's a song that you play regularly, use the metronome and play it at a slower tempo and work up uh, some different fills slower and then speed them up, that kind of thing. If navigating scales the way I'm doing to do these example fills is something that's challenging for you, I can highly recommend my ebooks, uh, Electric Bass Scales and Arpeggios, will get you through the basics in one and two octaves and also talk about improv a little bit and Beastly Scales and Arpeggios gets into full monster detail with really like going all over the neck and never getting lost in a given key and that kind of stuff. So I highly recommend checking those out at joshfosscreen.com slash books. I'll put a link in the description. Thank you guys so much for watching. I love making these lessons for you. I really hope it was helpful. Please let me know if you were able to identify yourself as an early fill ender. Um, and uh, I'd love to hear some success stories about taking it out on a gig and playing a fill that actually runs the, the tension all the way up into the next bar and maybe somebody in the band reacts. These are the kind of stories I would love to hear, folks. So, um, yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll be back at you soon. Ha 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 ha, the power of bass compels you. Subscribe to this channel for more bass lessons, or click on the video preview to watch another one right now. Ha 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 